Hello, good evening, and welcome to the Elida Fieldhouse, where tonight on WOSN we'll bring you a non-conference matchup between the visiting Delta St. John's Blue Jays and the homestanding Elida Bulldogs. I'm Garrett Seawright, joined alongside Dave Bowen, and we'll bring you all the action tonight here from Elida. And Dave, looking forward to a good basketball game tonight. Yeah, it should be a great game. We've got two solid clubs coming into the 22-23 uh, season, looking to make their mark here in the non-game. Non regular season game tonight. Yeah. And tonight's pregame coverage brought to you by Lox Chiropractic and Weight Loss. Lox Chiropractic and Weight Loss offers area residents good health through chiropractic care. And when you take a look at the, the keys to the game tonight, Dave, what stands out for you that, that both squads got to accomplish tonight? Yeah, there's three points I want to talk about tonight, Garrett. First of all, new season, new confidence. Elida, two and one coming into tonight's game. A loss to Spencerville last night, but Spencerville's going to beat a lot of teams. They were three and 20 last year. Six returning lettermen. They're really doing a nice job here. New confidence, new season for them. And St. John's, they opened with a victory last night with their first game over Kaleida. Bounced up 17 at halftime, held on. Six returning lettermen again. They're looking to get things going after having a losing, losing season last year as well. Secondly, both teams must drive with caution. Both of these teams play great half-court man-to-man defense, and they'll take the charge. Landon Grothaus for St. John's took 32 charges last year, and Elida has accumulated seven thus far this year. Got to play solid on offense. Know what you're doing when you penetrate with the basketball. And then third, it's a diaper dandy's debut weekend. Usually don't talk about individual players with our keys, but there's a freshman for St. John's in Cameron Elwood. He's outstanding, and he has those aforementioned six returning lettermen to work around. He had 22 points last night, six rebounds, four threes. I remember watching him as a ball boy when we would play St. John's. I was glad he wasn't in the starting line up then. So we'll see what happens tonight. So those are a look at our keys to the game, and we'll step aside right now, come back with first quarter action. It's Delphi St. John's and Elida coming up on WOSN. Back here at the Elida Fieldhouse getting set for this non-conference matchup on this Saturday night. Garrett C. Wright and Dave Bowen joining you here from the Fieldhouse in time to take a look at the officials for tonight's ball game. But we, you see there the three guys giving up their Saturday night to come out and make sure these guys can play high school basketball. We appreciate them still being officials when, you know, it's a... Uh, the dying breed, and we appreciate those guys. Take a look at the starting lineup. Cameron O, where we talked about in the pregame show, the Locks Chiropractic pregame show, where he had 22 points and six rebounds a night ago. And Jack Herker, Aaron Munter, Landon Grothaus, and Nolan Schwinnin round out the starting five for the Delphi St. John's Blue Jays. And then you take a look at the starting five for Elida. Zori Island, Tori Thomas, Seth Sharp, David Etzcorn, and Bryce Engel will be the starting five for the guys in white as we get set to tip here from the field house, and the tip is won by the Blue Jays. And they'll get the first crack at the rim. Elida starts out in a little 1 2 2 zone. Grothaus. There you see Elwer with the basketball. Nice ball movement by the Blue Jays. Leads to a wide open three for Jack Gerker. Can't get it to go. And a rebound pulled down by Bryce Single. He averages 10 a night in that category for the Bulldogs. One and done for the Blue Jays. Elida pushes it up hard. Garrett, and then they get into their half-court set. Zori Island, the leading scorer for the Bulldogs, hands off to David Etzcorn straight away. Back to Island. He'll direct the offense. An angle. Back to Etzcorn. Bulldogs patient on this first possession. Pressure defense by the Blue Jays. Yeah, As Grothaus goes in the score. Sure does. There. Gets a hand on it. Elida look for a quick... Quick bucket there early. Good transition defense by St. John's, and then they get into their half-court set. They like to do a lot of double away screens and then isolate in the post, take away the help side. Seth Sharp called for the travel and the turnover. First turnover for either squad goes against the Bulldogs. So Elida looks like they're going to stay in that zone defense. They did not play... A possession of zone last weekend, the opening weekend of the season, both games on WOSN here at the Elida Fieldhouse. All man-to-man. -man. Blue Jays work it inside to Nolan Schwinnin, back out. Elworth thought about the three, will drive to the right block, kick back straight away, and a first foul 
And it's going to be a player control foul, number 22 for Elida. Bryce Engel takes that charge, and that's what we talked about yeah. in the pregame. Both of these teams, if you're going to penetrate, you got to be under control because the help's going to rotate over. In this situation, the zone defensive principles, Elida with the charge and the turnover on the Blue Jays. So Elmer picks up his first foul as Island will kick into the far corner to Seth Sharp. Straight away, Etzcorn jump stops in the lane, and a foul committed by Delphi St. John's. We'll see who that violation is on. That goes against Landon Grothaus. And David Etzcorn, that's a part of his game, getting into the paint off the dribble, does it there, draws the foul. So Seth Sharp will trigger it in right in front of the St. John's bench. 6.33 still to go here in this first quarter. Still looking. Gets it into angle. It's tipped out off of St. John's and Nolan Schwinnen. And it'll stay with the Bulldogs, but even pressuring on the inbound there, Dave. Yeah, that's typical of St. John's defense. Coach Elwers made that a staple. Zori Island with a basketball. Fancy dribbles. Picks it up and gives back to Engel straight away. Throws left to Sharp. That's corner at the top of the key. Island jabs. Rises. Has to adjust the shot. Affected by Schwinnen. And a rebound comes down to the Blue Jays. Grothaus had his pass stolen away. Sharp will race back the other way. And the first points of the evening go to Seth Sharp. On a live ball turnover, Seth Sharp gets his hand on that, that pass, takes it down and scores. And those live ball turnovers were kind of the Achilles heel last night for Elida in the loss to Spencerville. They had seven of them in the first quarter. And there you see a live or a, a turnover, excuse me, by Jack Gerker. Yeah, you never like turnovers, you're right. But in this situation, St. John's can go back and set up their defense. You're right. Those light ball turnovers, you get easy buckets. In the, and in a game like tonight where I think defense is going to be uh, paramount on the floor for both teams, when you get those easy ones, you really appreciate it. Yeah, two squads that want to play tight man-to-man -man defense, and you see St. John's playing some – or, excuse me, Elida playing some zone early. Torrey Thomas will turn. Jumper, got it to go. Nice baseline jumper by the senior post player. Steps away from the block a little bit. Pretty shot for yeah, Thomas. Nice, nice touch there from Torrey Thomas. Gives the line of the 4 0 advantage. Blue Jays. Elwer with the basketball. Bounces to Munter. Aaron Munter will turn in the lane. Jump stop. Back to Gerker. Thought about the three. Instead, Elwer with the basketball. Double teamed along the sideline. Gets out of it. He'll rise and fire for three. Nice bucket there by the freshman. So the first three points of the night for the Blue Jays go to Cameron Elwer. Eli to pressure. Tory Tom, or excuse me, Zori Island drives, goes up and under, can't get it to go, and a rebound comes down to Grothaus. Island did everything right there, just didn't finish. Gerker, plenty of time to fought up for three, can't get it. Offensive rebound of the Blue Jays. Munter powers up a shot. Yeah, that's a nice job. Gave some space up, but earned it back. Took the contact, went through it, and finished. Line. Good offensive rebound, stick back. Lead goes to St. John's, 5-4. About halfway through this first quarter. Island scans the defense. Still holding the basketball. Now we'll put it on the deck and dribble into that corner. Angle straight away to Ed's court. He lied a patient once again with his offensive possession. And you have to be, Garrett, you have to be patient because you're going to the teeth of that defense. You've got to make them work, reverse the basketball, get the ball in the post right here like Thomas has it. One-on-one, -on -one, he sees he's isolated, going to go to work. Now quick double team gets to a three to Sharp straight away. No. Rebound loose and goes to the Blue Jays. Elwer grabs it, and he'll bring it up the floor. Mid-range jumper is silky smooth for Cameron Elwer. He realized he had a post player on him, decided not to penetrate. Little nice step-back jump shot there, finishes from the baseline. There's not a whole lot of guys who are comfortable taking that shot, let alone freshmen. Yeah, and the way he read it, he's coming right at us, Garrett. We could see he was reading the defense. Again, most freshmen are just trying to make sure they're dribbling the basketball and finding an open teammate or looking at the basket. Cameron did a great job of reading the defense there, took what the defense gave him and scored. A turnover by the Bulldog gives the basketball back to St. John's with a three-point lead with 3.33 to go here in this first quarter. Elwer back straight away. It's Austin Munner in the ballgame for the first time. Munner bounces to the high post. 
Gerker. Back to Munner straight away. Zone defense employed by the Bulldogs. Blue Jays trying to get it down low. They'll be patient once again after nearly losing the basketball. Munner thought about the three. Back to Elwer. He will put up a three. Yes, sir. Nothing but the silky bottom of the net. That shot right there, that's like free dessert on your birthday, Garrett. Ten to four and eight of the points to Cameron Elwer. You see a great look at the replay there where he splashed home two threes here in this first quarter and a timeout called by the Bulldogs. Just what we thought we would see, even though he's a freshman, he's playing at the Elida Fieldhouse. They have scored, have the Blue Jays in their last four possessions. Wow. And again, playing here at the Fieldhouse, it's a place where in Division IV basketball, it's a little mecca. Yeah, You're playing absolutely. in the district tournament here. Nothing like hitting your first few shots right away as a freshman because he hopes to have, as does his dad, the head coach, have a lot of memories of this building right yeah, here. They'd like to play as many games in this place as possible. And he's got eight early first quarter points with under three to go here in this first quarter. Island will slowly walk the ball across the timeline and angle to that right wing. Finds Tanner Roberts for three, can't knock it home, and the rebound comes down to the Blue Jays as Munner will push the ball yeah. up the floor across the timeline. Coming out of that timeout, Eli are going to go back to what they typically do defensively, and that's play man-to-man. -man. Bulldogs pressure. Gerker kicks it back out to Nolan Schwinnen. Blue Jays will reset as Munter looks to Aaron Elworth for further instructions. Gets it. I'm sure Coach Tabler, you know, scouting report said we, we can't allow penetration, but they gave up too many good looks there. Get back to their man-to-man. -man. And Elworth drive fouled. Believe the foul committed by Camden Howard in the ball game. Nope, they'll give it to David Etzgord. And Elida playing tonight without Jackson Kovalt, who's usually in the starting lineup, out with a broken nose. Broke it last night against Spencerville and had to make a trip to the ER and get his nose reset, which, you know, in the third game of the season is probably not something you're really looking forward to. Absolutely. You hate to have that happen to the young man, but... Hopefully he can uh, get a face mask on and get back out here sooner than later. Elwer another three. <laughs> yes, sir. Cameron Elwer with 11 first quarter points at 22 last night. He's halfway there with two minutes to go in the first quarter. The Diaper Dandies weekend debut in high school basketball. He is not faced by this at all. He's been around it all his life. Elwer with a great pass. Baseline drive by Grothaus, fouled by Torrey Thomas. And Landon Grothaus will step to the free throw line. Yeah, Landon Grothaus, again, a veteran player. We see it on the replay, nice penetration. Draws the contact from Torrey Thomas to go to the free throw line. Grothaus has dealt with injuries throughout his career, yeah. plays through them. Uh, again, having Elwer out there this year just makes him that much more uh, determined and versatile, if you will, as well, Garrett. Gives him a lot of more options. That's an offensive player for the Blue Jays. T.J. Wirtz checks in for Nolan Schwinn in his Grothaus. Hits the second free throw to give him the first point of the evening. Bulldogs, a little wild with the basketball. Goes into the third row of the bleachers, and it will go to St. John's. That Blue Jay defense has not relented at all here in this first quarter. No, not at all. And again, Elida, they're playing with more patience but it almost seems like, uh, as a result, they're having more turnovers because maybe they're thinking too much. Hate to go there right, right. now, but it seems like it. Elwer for three. That one doesn't go home, and a rebound pulled down by Camden Howard of Elida. Let's see if the Bulldogs can find some rhythm on this possession. Trailing by 10, Howard with the basketball to Etzcorn. Gets to Tanner Roberts, and a bounce pass tipped out of bounds by the Blue Jays. It'll stay with Elida. Again, a staple of a Blue Jay basketball team. Get in those passing lanes, create deflections. Aaron Elwer in his 16th year at the helm at Delphus. Grant Ulm checks in the ball game as Elwer will take a seat on the bench. Cameron Elwer, that is. Aaron Elwer, as Dave mentioned, in his 16th season, sitting on 198 career wins, is a foul committed by the Blue Jays on the inbounds. Not a popular call to those wearing blue. And it happened to be right in front of the student and parent section. So <laughs> the official's going to hear it a little bit right there. Tanner Roberts, the junior, will inbound for Elida. 
Bounces into the island. He'll turn and face the basket. So we approach one minute to go here in this first quarter. Bulldogs got out to the 4 0 lead, have been outscored 14 0 since. Island hands off to Howard. Sharp had 16 points in the opener. Looking for his first point of the night. Leans in, didn't get it to go, but he'll step to the free throw line. Yeah, I like what Seth Sharp did right there. Penetrated, under control, up fake the defense. We're going to see it here on the WSN replay. Great shot by the camera crew. Draws the contact. Going to go to the free throw line. Seth Sharp, he had 10 points last night in that game versus Spencerville. Picks up his third point tonight on that free throw. So Seth Sharp will step back to the free throw line. A 75% free throw shooter coming into tonight. Some Blue Jays make some more changes. As TJ Wirtz will step out of the lineup, Nolan Schwinnen back in. So he got just a short rest with under a minute to go here in this first quarter. Second one rims out on Sharp. He'll stay at three points. Blue Jays work the basketball around the perimeter. Cameron Elwer straight away. Elwer back to Grothaus. Plenty of time to set up for three. No. Rebound comes down to the Bulldogs. Island will push the tempo for just a moment. Cross court pass. Stop and pop for three. No. Long rebound comes out to Howard. Turn around. Put back. No. And Elwer grabs the board for the Blue Jays. Probably holding for the final shot here with 20 seconds. Definitely a quarter that the Blue Jays have controlled, a chance to take momentum into the quarter break. Grothaus between the circles. Throws right back to Elwer. He lighted back in the zone on this possession. Elwer, mid-range jumper again. No offensive putback, no good at the horn for Schwinnen. And we played one quarter of basketball. St. John's 14, he lied a 5, 11 first quarter points from Cameron Elwer here on WOSN. John Stocker DDS is tonight's premier sponsor for the Elida Bulldogs, providing dental care for high school sports fans. 14-5 St. John's with the lead. Last year, the eight seed in the tournament lost in the sectional finals to Columbus Grove. You see there a 10-12 record, but 5-4 in the Midwest Athletic Conference. Elida took their lumps in Matt Taylor's first season, playing a young group that went 3-4. 19 and lost the sectional semifinal to Napoleon in a hard-fought game that the Wildcats made the district final. So um, the Bulldogs already with two wins on the season after having just three a season ago. In that quarter break, I think Coach Taylor's just talking to his team about, okay, let's get back to what we do. Again, don't, don't give too much up here. Be who we are. Let's look to attack. They scored one free throw in their last eight possessions of that first quarter and have a turnover right there. And not the way the second quarter wanted to get underway for the Bulldogs. It's the Blue Jays come back the other way. Elwer lost the handle on it, but is able to get it back. Double teamed and finds Schwinnen for three. No. Rebound grabbed by Angle. Good rebound by Bryce Angle. Leading rebounder for the Bulldogs as that scoring will drive baseline. Gets it into Thomas, and the first bucket in a long time for Elida is up and good. And Torrey Thomas now with four points. Yeah, that penetration by Etzcorn set that up. Thomas finished it. Give the assist to Etzcorn. Another three by Elwer is good. The Blue Jays just playing with so much confidence. We talked about that in the pregame as well. They're not looking for the freshman, but the ball is finding him, and he's sticking it in the basket. His teammates jubilating down the floor and joy as he's hit that bucket right there. Good job. Bulldogs trailing by 10, looking to cut the lead. Sharp, baseline, bounce pass to Thomas. Angle straight away, put up the free throw line jumper, and tickles it home. Great inside out action. Anytime that ball's coming out of the post, your feet are set. Good shot there, two points for the Bulldogs. And two straight possessions down the floor, Dave, for Elida that looked much better than the, the back half of that first quarter. Absolutely. Elwer open for three again. We're going to have to guard him. Might need to think about a box of one, diamond and one, get out of the zone. Has 17 points already. A miss by Etzcorn, grabbed by the Blue Jays. Cameron Elwer crosses over, trying to draw a foul. Instead gets in the near corner. The Blue Jays bumped by Torrey Thomas. That'll be his second foul. 
Yeah, 17 points for Elwer here with 6.03 to go in the second quarter. We see things set up. Nice fake there and attacking the basket. Thomas picks up the personal great replay. We, we mentioned in the Walks Chiropractic pregame show where um, Cameron Elwer had 22 points in his varsity debut, and we thought, that's, that's pretty good for your Absolutely. first time out. Here at 17 points with six minutes to go in the second quarter. Incredible. Jump shot off the mark by Grothaus. Rebound, though, comes back to the Blue Jays. Another three from Grothaus. That one's good. Offensive rebound set that up. Inside out action. So Grothaus able to get his feet set on that one. 20, Buries it. 23 9 lead for the Bulldogs. Island hammered in the lane. Yes, Grothaus called for the foul. That's his second. So Blue Jays will send Jack Gerker back to the scorer's table here to probably see Nolan Schwinnin sit for a bit, picking up his second foul. Torrey Island goes hard to his left. He is left-handed. You see it on his free throw right here. But he is very strong to his right as well, Garrett. Can go either way. Mark of a great point guard. Torrey Island is starting to roll in that way is the sophomore. Yeah, and what I was going to mention, as a sophomore, played virtually the entire season last year, running the point for Elida. And in the Western Buckeye League, you don't want to play a freshman point guard, but they were pressed into that, and he, he learned a lot last year. Absolutely. So Zori Island hits both free throws. Gerker thought about the three from straight away. Instead, we'll get to Elwer. Munter with the basketball. Gerker. He lighted back to straight man-to-man -man here. Ethan Druckmiller in the ball game, And a foul committed by David Engel. It's his first. So Bryce Engel picks up the first foul. And the Blue Jays will retain possession. Just see. Nice entry pass into the post. Comes to the middle. Body contact. On the floor foul. Blue Jays with the basketball off the inbound. It's Austin Munner. Jump stops, gets to Elwer. Back to Munner. No. Back iron rebound, pulled down by Seth Sharp. They'll quickly push the basketball up the floor. Island in the lane, lays it off the window and gets it to go. Torrey Island able to get to his left. Again, does a nice job finishing there at the basket. The blow by, if you will. Good bucket for Elida. Lead back down to 10. As Druk Miller has his back to the basket. Double teamed. Call and an offensive, offensive foul. foul. Yes. I like the spin move in there. We're going to see the uh, penetration by Island. Nice job attacking the rim. That's what you got to do. That pressure defense of the Blue Jays. Fight it with pressure offense. Don't be too respectful. Look to attack. Torrey Island does it right there. Yeah, Zori went straight to the hoop there. And uh, those, are the, those are the easy ones. Those are the easy hoops when you can get in the lane and is able to cut that lead to two and then you get the offensive foul and it looks like Eli is a little more uh, cohesive maybe is the right word here in the second quarter on the offensive end. Yeah, cohesive finding some flow in their offense. Etzcorn with the penetration. Got the hoop and the harm. David Etzcorn, his first bucket of the night. He'll get the opportunity to go to the free throw line to convert the old fashioned three point play. We said he likes to penetrate. We're gonna see it on the replay. Comes right at the Blue Jays. Number 10, Colin Feathers, tries to get there for the charge. Unable to get in position in time. That's going with the bucket and a chance for the three-point play the old-fashioned way. 80% free throw shooter is the 5'10 junior. And he gets the old-fashioned three-point play. So Elida's climbing back into it here. And it, it's sort of, it's a similar Scenario that played out last night for both squads where St. John's got out to a big lead against Kaleida and hung on where Elida got down big. They gave up 41 first half points to Spencerville and, you know, turned the ball over a little bit where it, you kind of can see that script playing out again here tonight. Yeah, but Coach Tate, he's got to be happy right now with how Elida's responding Absolutely. tonight differently than last night. Blue Jays quite content to take their time. Cameron Elwer, high ball screen. Has to give off to Aaron Munner. Back to Elwer. Triple team for a brief moment. Island picks up the pressure. Schwinnen. Elwer thought about the three. Instead, will drive to the right elbow. Double teamed. Schwinnen for a three. Yes. Give the assist to Elwer, but he drew two guys, and that allowed. 
the three-point shot to make itself available. We see it on the replay. Practice that time Schwinnen. and time again, did Schwinnen, and that's his first basket. But you're right, to extend that lead back out to, uh, to 10 points to make it 26-16 here in the second quarter, that's a big three from a, from a guy that, you know, gets getting that opportunity. So in this quarter thus far, St. John's, they have 12 points, all on three-pointers. You'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> if, yeah but if even you're... with that, you got to look at what uh, Elida has done. They, they've cut into this lead. That three pushed it back to 10. But again, as we said, Coach Taylor, he's got to be pleased with what's occurring right now with his team at the offensive end compared to the first quarter. And St. John's has shot the basketball really well from behind the three-point line. That, that last night, they were able to rely on that a little bit in the, the five-point win against Kaleida. And I'm sure if you said to Aaron Elwer, hey, if you're, you're going to shoot at a 45% clip from behind the three-point line. I'm, I'm guessing he'll take that. Yeah, they're comfortable out there. They've got that rhythm. They've always been a team, and, and it's been a staple of his that the kids will shoot to three. Everybody's available to do it, and uh, again, tonight they're making them. Turnover there by David Etzkor and called for the travel. He's just got a little awkward spot where he tried to, uh, you know, cross over and uh, got the basketball hung up for just a moment. So another turnover called against the Bulldogs, and the Blue Jays will go back to work offensively. Elwer drives, kicks, Munner, yes. Another assist for Elwer, and again, the other, the Blue Jays players, they're just sitting behind that arc, waiting for it to come to them, and when it does, inside-out action right there, nothing but the bottom of the net. Five threes in the quarter now for St. John's. 29-16 to score, that's Korn with the basketball. Surveys the defense, and will bring it to the top of the key. Hands off, another handoff by the Bulldogs. Back to Etzkorn. Island spins, step back, will let it fly, drops it home. Nice shot by Zori Island right there. Does a great job of getting his feet set. Little 15-footer. Lost art, that 15-footer. He drilled it. Elwer rises and fires. Hasn't shot a three in a while. Rebound pulled down by Angle. Bulldogs trailing by 11. Island, great backdoor cut by Etzkorn, lost the handle on it, and it goes out of bounds off the junior. You're right, it was a great backdoor cut. We see the shot by Zori Island on the previous possession. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Straight dice for Island there. Zori Island with six points here in the first half. As Cameron Elwer brings the ball across the timeline, directs that offense, the freshman. Bounce pass into the block. We got a blocking foul as Aaron Munner received the pass on the block and Engel tried to draw the charge instead, called for the block, his second. Bryce Engel at a disadvantage there, tried to get the charge. I like the block call in that situation, Garrett. Did not have his feet set and there wasn't much contact as far as driving into the defensive player and then their feet got tangled up. Torrey Thomas will come back in as Engel will take a seat on the bench. Elwer inbounds. Blue Jays get it to Schwinnen. Munner thought about the three, double team, back to Schwinn, and he will let one fly. Off the front iron, rebound grab by Munner. Great ball movement by the Blue Jays. Elwer will drive the lane, floater off the window and down. Jabs to the right, comes to the middle, kisses it off the window for two. 19 for, uh, for Elwer, excuse me, as Seth Sharp knocks home a three. Nice bust for Sharp there on the right wing. Big bucket for Elida right there. It's, again, they're, they're in that danger yeah, zone. 10 to 13. Around. Yeah, cut it down to seven a couple times. Foul committed by Zori Island, his first, and that's the seventh committed by the Bulldogs. Or is that the sixth committed by the Bulldogs? I think we're having that discussion. It's going to be sideline out of bounds. We see the penetration by Elwer and the foul called on Zori Island. It looked like he got a lot of basketball on that replay. As Elwer will, full, will inbound in front of the Elida student section right there. So Zori Island looking for clarification huh? from the official. Gets it and will play on. So Elwer gets straight away to Munner. Austin Munner. Gets Elwer wide open for a three, and he's got 22 now on the night. Wow. 
Looks like this is his playground right now, Garrett. Very comfortable out there. Absolutely. Very comfortable with 22 points, shooting the three with a lot of confidence. And then the whole team is comfortable as a result. Again, uh, St. John's has battled the last few years at the offensive end, scoring. Uh, that doesn't appear to be an issue anymore. Under a minute to go here in this first half. Bulldogs now trail by 13. Torrey Thomas will turn and face. Hit one from there earlier. Finds that scoring back at the top of the key. And the Bulldogs will back it back out for a moment. Sharp. Camden Howard finds Lonesome on that right side. Sharp with six points. Give him eight off the window. Again, nice penetration going to his left. Elida has, some, has had some success penetrating the basketball, usually off a of reversal, as we saw right there from Sharp. Elwer with 22 points and 15 seconds remaining in the half. 10 seconds now, the ball in the hands of Austin Munner. Back to Elwer with six. Elwer gets a high ball screen in the lane to the window, goes up and under and drops it home. Wow, a lot of contact there, no foul, but at the buzzer, Cameron Elwer with the blow by. We're gonna see it on the WSN replay. Attacks the rim, through bodies, up off the window and good. High off the window to give the St. John's Blue Jays a 36-23 advantage over Elida here at the halftime break. We'll step aside, come back with our Locks Chiropractic halftime adjustment. It's next here on WOSN. Our halftime adjustments tonight brought to you by Lox Chiropractic and Weight Loss. Lox Chiropractic and Weight Loss offers area residents good health through chiropractic care. And Dave, when you take a look at what both sides were talking about there at the halftime break, what 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 adjustments do you think Matt Tabor and Aaron Elwer are trying to make with their squads? Well, first of all, for Elida, Coach Tabler, hey guys, we've scored 23 points in what has essentially been a half-court game. That's not all that bad, but defensively, we've given up a lot. I think they need to think about a box and one on L where he's got 24 points in the first half. That's incredible. And then St. John's, you've got to be pleased, obviously, with what you've done offensively. And those 24 points for Cameron Elwer have come within the context of their offense. He's not out there trying to do things one-on-one. Yeah. -on -one. Yeah. He's letting the, the game come to him. And then defensively, St. John's, we got to limit penetration. Elida has been effective when they've been able to get to the basket offensively. And then the very first possession for the Blue Jays goes straight into the hands of Aaron Munter. And Munter extends the lead to 15. So the Bulldogs get to work out of the halftime break. Etzgorn traveled with the basketball. So there's that penetration, but the St. John's defense collapsed on it, created the turnover. And that first possession, St. John scored very quickly. Let's see if they've made some adjustments defensively. They do have sharp face guarding Elwer now. And everybody else is still man to man, but he is total face guard on Elwer. I like that concept. Blue Jays with the basketball. It's Grotenhouse, finds Elwer straight away. He'll put it on the deck. Into the far corner, three for Gerker. It's good. Jack Gerker's first basket of the night is good for three, and it grows the lead to 18. He's able to get his feet set off the penetration. Elwood finds it. Give Elwood the assist. Tory Gerker with a nice bucket. Bangs down low and gets rid of it to Angle. Elida shot 52% there in that first half, David. I don't know that they probably feel that it, it feels like they shot 52% in that first half. You're exactly right. St. John scored and uh, St. John shot 54%. Angle for two. Gives him four. But then the Blue Jays go straight to the hoop as the shot off the mark there for Elwer. Blue Jays get back quickly on D. Island in the lane. Left hand can't get it to go and a foul committed by Angle. His third. I like the hard penetration by Zori Island, Island right there. Ball. Just needed to take that Number contact one, and finish. Two, Doesn't two, come away ball. with the basket, and then we have an over-the-back call. But and that's third, what I think Elida needs first. to do, try and speed this game up a little bit in any way, shape, or form that they can. And uh, with the basketball there, Island did go coast to coast. Just came up empty. 41-25. Blue Jays get into their set. So Elwer receives the basketball once again. Double-teamed. 
gives to Grothaus. Munner back to the basket. Too strong. Thomas the board. And here comes Eli to see if they look for something quick in transition. That's Corn thought about it. Angle banging down low. Gets to Thomas. Island Sharp. That's where they isolate the post and work a double screen on the back side. Nice defense by St. John's, taking away the cut. Elida still patient with the basketball as Thomas nearly slipped. Instead, Seth Sharp has it with 5.30 to go here in the third. Drives baseline, nearly a jump ball with Elwer. No call, and the ball comes back with the Blue Jays. Good defense by the Blue Jays there. Stayed in front of the basketball, but here comes Zori Island. Got the pocket pick, jump stop in the lane, and Zori Island now has eight points. Great body control there by Island. Again, a jump stop, as you said, Garrett, off of two feet, nice and easy over the front of the rim. And then Grothaus gets the hoop and a foul. Landon Grothaus attacking the rim. Have watched him do that throughout his high school career. We're going to see fakes to the middle, comes hard to the right, kisses it off the glass. No help afforded there by Elida. Takes it one-on-one -on -one against Island and scores. Again, another opportunity for the three-point play the old-fashioned way. Grothaus had 11 last night in the opener against Kaleida and now give him seven on the evening. And the lead is 17 for St. John's. That score and rises, fires, no. Rebound comes out to Landon Grothaus. Blue Jays with the basketball. Grothaus nearly lost it. Gets to Gerker. Fouls pass to Druk Miller. Ball nearly stolen away off the Aaron pass from Wirtz. He's got the basketball straight away. Throws right to Kirker. Gives back to Grothaus. And the Blue Jays will change things up. So we approach four and a half to go here in this third quarter. Munner. Austin Munner, that is. With the basketball and gets it over. To Grothaus. He'll drive. Double teamed underneath the hoop. Gets it off the window. Couldn't go. Good Hold rotation on. defensively by Elida. Here they come. Island. Fakes out the defender, drives baseline. He's called for the charge. That's our second charge of the night. One for each team now. Zori Island decided to make a run at the basket there. We're going to see it on the WSN replay. Fakes coming back to the middle, comes hard to baseline. But there's your help defense rotating across. Nice charge taken there by number 15, Ethan Drew Miller. And that's the third foul committed by Zori Island, so he's going to take a seat on the bench here for the Elida Bulldogs, as will Bryce Engel. As Camden Howard is back in the ballgame. And we see Amari Wash for the first time. Wash, a freshman guard. That's Grothaus. Foul committed by Torrey Thomas there. They and that'll be his third. Yeah, they switched on the screen, and Grothaus was able to draw the foul off the big man. So early here in the second half, Elida already with four fouls to none for St. John's. Doesn't help if you're trying to get back into yeah. the game if you put the other team in the bonus. Grothaus, high ball screen from Drew Miller, splits the double team, lost the handle, and it'll stay with the boys in blue. So again, the Blue Jays working their offense right now. <laughs> the freshman's not on the floor. They, they, they seem a little more jagged when he's not out there, even though they're not looking for him to run the show in any way, shape, or form. As we see the held ball tie up. The inbound to Druk Miller, and he's immediately tied up, and a possession arrow points to Elida. And Elwer's going to come back in the game right now. So got him a little bit of a rest. But you're right, the, the offense just doesn't have the exact flow when he's not on the floor. And it will, it will, but you're right. <laughs> Second game of the there. year. Yeah, exactly. So Wash hands off to Atscore. Bulldogs looking to climb back in, trailing by 17. Ball goes out of bounds off of St. John's. And Druk Miller, it'll stay with the Bulldogs. Ethan Druk Miller, a 6'3 senior. It's Wash will inbound right of his own basket. Bounces in to Howard, and a foul committed by Wirtz and T.J. Wirtz. So it'll be under out of bounds again. Eli had run some very effective under out of bounds sets. So Mari Wash, the freshman, will inbound once again. 3.37 to go here in this third quarter. 
as he finally gets the basketball from the official. And they'll get it into Seth Sharp. Sharp with eight points here in the ball game. Had his pocket picked from behind by Elwer. Elwer into the far corner. Austin Munner drives, and it's stolen away by Torrey Thomas. One good turnover deserves another. Wash quickly, free throw line, no. Elwer another board. You know, as a head coach, you always want your point guard to be an extension of you on the court. When he's your son, it makes it that much more <laughs> effective as Elwer brings the ball down the floor there. Elwer, tightly guarded by Sharp, with three minutes to go in the th third quarter. And Sharp will pick up his first foul of the evening. His first team up. Looks like the Blue Jays are going to make some wholesale changes here. They'll send three guys to the scorer's table to check in. It's Wirtz, Drew Miller, and Drew Boggs sub out. They'll have to make some changes as well as Torrey Thomas and Seth Sharp will take a seat on the bench. As Austin Munner inbounds for the Blue Jays. Joel Schrader in the ballgame for the first time. Working in the post. Elwer will give to Grothaus. Grothaus rises, fires, no. Rebound grabbed by Engel. Nice rebound by Engel, got up in the air on that one. Here comes the Bulldogs. Island gives way, gets it right back. Zori Island in the lane to Wash. He'll put it on the deck, up and under, and give Amari Wash the first bucket of his varsity career. That's that. That's that penetration there that uh, I know Coach Taylor's got to be real pleased with. Coach Elwer, defensively, no rotation. He's probably going to address that in the film session looking at this game. No one came over to help Amari Wash, as you said, able to attack the rim and score. Grothaus to the window, poked out of his hands by Howard, and the Bulldogs quickly race up the floor. Howard wanted to get the ball to Etzcorn in the corner, and Matt Tabor wanted him to get it there as well. Absolutely. We, we saw the uh, antics, if you will, in a calm way as we see the replay here right there. He wanted to see that pass to Coach Tabler, but again, uh, game four, feeling it out a little bit. The young man did attack the rim, drew the foul. So Amari Wash inbounds underneath his own basket, looking, still looking, and will lob it in to Howard. Here's to Island. Zori Island in the lane. Can't get it to go. And a rebound grab by Aaron Munner. Cameron Elwer with 24 points on tonight. Finds a wide open Gerker. Thought about the three. Instead, Blue Jays will run a little clock here with 90 seconds to go in the quarter. Elwer with his back to the basket. Turns and faces in the short corner. Spins. Foul committed by Elida before the shot. Nice strength on that move as well for the freshman. You see him eye up the defender, take it hard to the middle, spin dribble. You got to have great upper strength uh, body there to get through that. Draws the foul on the floor. So Blue Jays retain possession, inbound. As Munner thought about the three from the corner, instead will bring it back out to the right wing. Give it to Gerker. Jack Gerker played golf at the University of Finley next year. Gives to Nolan Schwinnett. Back to Austin Munner. Tightly guarded. Straight away to Aaron Munner. Looks back to Austin with under a minute to go. Bounce pass looking for Elwer. Stolen by the Bulldogs. Seth Sharp got his mitts on it. As Amari Wash dribbles quickly. Back to the basket at the free throw line. Engel. Back to Wash, working on Munner. Jump stop in the lane, floater, no. Rebound grabbed by Aaron Munner. Does a nice job getting into the paint. Jump stops, just got to finish that shot. Good luck. Crossover by Elwer at the right wing, and he'll back it back out. 30 seconds to go here in this third quarter. 15-point advantage for St. John's. See if Coach Elwer wants to go for one here with 20 seconds remaining now. Illegal screen. That's a tough way for that possession to end there if you're a St. John's fan. St. John's personal number five. Elwood. So the foul goes against Schwinnick. Just his first. And now 15 seconds remain here in this third quarter. 
Zori Island across the timeline. Gives to Wash. Angle. Back to Wash. In a tough spot in the lane with three. Sharp will fire up a contested jumper at the horn. And we've played three quarters of basketball. 44-29, St. John's leads by 15 over the Alina Bulldogs. Fourth quarter action coming up on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight provided by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. And also timeouts tonight are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. Elida was able to force St. John to the six turnovers that quarter, a much lower scoring quarter there, eight to six in favor of the Blue Jays. Travel called on Torrey Thomas as he went to scoop up the basketball. Matt Tabor arguing he got shoved. I think he's got a bit of a case there that he went to scoop the basketball on the, the rebound that the ball was loose. And Blue Jays will retain possession, then they'll throw it away. It's a race for it. Picked up by Etzcorn. Tried to leave it off. Ball still loose, finally scooped up by the Blue Jays. Etzcorn will guard Elwer the entire length of the floor. Landon Grothaus has a basketball. Tightly guarded by Zori Island. Bounces to Munner in the lane. Tried to power up a shot, lost the handle. Island back quickly the other way. It leaves off for Tory Thomas. Bulldogs trying to get something going here. Tanner Roberts with the basketball gives to Thomas. Etzcorn wide open for three. Can't get it to go. And the rebound comes down to Nolan Schwinnick. Yeah, good look there. And as you said, Elida, they need to make a dent on this lead here in the first couple three minutes of this quarter. They're going to give themselves a chance. That one drops home. As Elwer, now with 26, his first Elwer. point there of the second half. I'm sure, you know, the Bulldogs were glad to keep him scoreless there in the third quarter, but weren't able to take a bite out of that lead. That, yeah, that's the key there. They kept him scoreless, but the other Blue Jays stepped up, and again, it was a low quarter, low scoring quarter for both squads there in the third canto. Thomas is back to the basket in the lane. Working on Munner. Leans, hits. Excellent post work in the middle of the floor there by Torrey Thomas. I really like what he does with the basketball when he gets it in the paint. Finishes there with a nice spin move. Cameron Elmer crosses over to the window. And the foul. Excellent strength again to go through the defender and finish at the basket does Cameron Elwer. We're going to see it here on the WOSN replay. Takes it right down on Edscorn, goes through him. No help afforded. And that strength on display there to work against a junior. Gets the bucket and the free throw. So he has five points here in the early going of the fourth quarter, the first five points for the Jays. He's got 29 on the evening now as they lead 49-31. Ball goes out of bounds. It'll stay with the Bulldogs as they'll say it goes out of bounds off of Nolan Schwinnett. So the Bulldogs will inbound, trailing by 18 with six minutes to go on the Web Insurance Agency scoreboard. Sharp gets it into Angle. He'll hand off to Zori Island just inside the midcourt strike. He'll bounce to Etzcorn. Bulldogs need a couple of hoops and a couple of stops if they'd like to claw back into this one. Island, free throw line, lefty jumper, no, rebound. Comes down to Drew Miller. Good defense by St. John's on the spin move at the free throw line. Made a tough look for Zori Island. Hell with the high ball screen. Bulldogs just fight through it, and a foul committed by Seth Sharp, I believe. His second, and St. John shooting free throws from here on out on the foul. Cameron Elwer with 29 points, the six-foot freshman. Step into the line, looking to make it an even 30. And right now, coaches are going to see this game film, and they're going to try and figure out, okay, 
where are his deficiencies? And sitting right here with you, Garrett, right now, I can't find any. <laughs> that, that could be a problem for uh, coaches in the Midwest Athletic Conference. As the second free throw is up and good as well, gives Cameron Elworth 31 points on the evening. Sharp goes up for a shot, a jump ball call. His hand went straight on top of the basketball. Again, good defense on the penetration, pushed him down to the baseline. Sharp tried to come back from underneath the basket. The held ball was a result. Possession arrow favors Elida. Island inbounds to Engel, right back to Island. That's Thorne, backs back out. Bounces to Island. Cross-court pass to Sharp. One of the three lost the handle just for a moment. Island gets to Etzcorn on the way. Bulldogs trail by 20. Angle. Over to Sharp. Corey Thomas lets one fly. Can't get it to go. Elwer, another rebound. Blue Jays running a little time off the clock. Leading by 20. As Elwer gets to Schwinn, and he's got a path for the basket on that far side. Into the near corner. Three ball for Grothaus is good. Nice play between Schwinn and Grothaus. They've been doing that throughout their high school career, finding each other, do it there for the three-point play. So lead up to 22 now. I thought it was a three. Did they call that a two? Uh, I guess so. Island with the basketball to Thomas. Short corner. Nearly out of his pocket pick. Ball's loose, and he did get it picked by Schwinnin. Elward dribbles out of a tough spot. Roadhouse for three. No. Rebound goes over the backboard. Roadhouse looking to drive a nail there. Coach Elward might say, okay, maybe we need to be a little more, more patient at this point in time. We've got a timeout on the floor. I'm Metzger Financial Services timeout call will step aside as well. 53-31, Blue Jays lead on WOSN. John Stocker, DDS is tonight's premier sponsor for the Elida Bulldogs, providing dental care for high school sports fans. Also, timeouts tonight are brought to you by Metzger Financial Services, helping you plan your financial future. Visit MetzgerFinancialServices.com. We'll take a look at this WOSN replay to see whether that's a three or not on the last possession. There for Landon Grothaus, certainly looks as if he's behind the line, but they called it a two. There was a fan in that area, but man, it looked like he was deep, but doesn't look like it'll have an effect on the game. Seth Sharp can't hang and hit. Another rebound for Grothaus. Blue Jays go up and under. Grothaus wanted to hang and hit. They called the Foul on the floor, so he'll step to line for one and one. Penetration for the Blue Jays puts Landon Grothaus to the free throw line. Last year he was an 83% free throw shooter, led the squad. Grothaus now with 10. On the made three, free throw. I had him for 10 on the made three. Exactly. Three point here, so. Well, it doesn't matter what we think. It's what the officials see, and they saw a two on that one, and we'll play on, but he hits both free throws. So he's got 11 now. Second leading scorer for the Blue Jays with Cameron Elwer at 31. And a five-second call. Elwer, great defense along with Drew Boggs to force that five-second call. You light it right now. They just got to keep playing hard every possession again. We're in the early season. They're gonna, they're a much improved squad this year. Just tonight hasn't gone their way. It's been a tough weekend for them. Going against a very good Spencerville ball team last night. They will regroup. They have Kenton on Friday at home. So they go from 2-0, as it looks like 2-2 two two here. But again, I do like what I see from Coach Tabler's squad and how they have improved this year. They'll go back to the drawing board, dissect the film, and get better this week of practice. Foul committed by David Enscorn. So Landon Grothaus steps back to the charity strike. 
hits both. He's got 13 tonight. Nice solid game for Grothaus as well for the Blue Jays. Eclipsed his total from last night, had 11 in the opener against Kalida. That's going with his back to the basket. Island drives the lane and gives Zori Island 10 points on the evening. Excellent cut, excellent pass. Etzcorn with the assist. Zori Island, nice bucket on the left side of the rim. Roadhouse working against Island. With under three minutes to go in tonight's ball game. Kicks, works for three. No. Ball loose. Rebound comes down to Boggs. Roadhouse back to Boggs. Loses the handle. Stays with St. John's. So Roadhouse finds a seat on the bench. Checking out with 13 points on the evening. Might be the final time we see him. Yeah, Coach Elwer going to his bench, getting some of the younger players some more playing time. They'll be needed down the stretch as we go through the season, no doubt. Box with his back to the basket. Bounces to Grant Alm. Alm pass to Fetters. Back to Alm. Box with the basketball. Colin Feathers will put it on the deck. Guarded by Etzcord. Boggs for three. No. Offensive rebound, though. No. Comes back to the Blue Jays. Put back from Joel Schrader, no good. Bulldogs come back the other way. Island lost a handle on it, and it's stolen away by Feathers. Colin Feathers, one on two. His pass nearly stolen away. It'll go out of bounds off the Bulldogs and stay with the boys in blue. Yeah, Zori Island again. He continues to improve. He played a lot last year. He's a sophomore, just got to continue to make good decisions on every possession, and he's going to be a real important key to this Elida Ball Club as they start heading into the middle of the season and uh, get the first part of it under their belts here. Looking for him to do good things for the Bulldogs. Seth Sharp checks out conceivably for the final time as Tanner Roberts back in the ball game for Elida. Boggs lost the handle, and it's corralled momentarily. It's that score and pressures in the backcourt. I'm not certain why the St. John student section just lost their minds, but they. I think I have it figured oh, out. Got, Gavin Holdgreave has gone to the scores table to check into the game. Got a couple of folks ready to sub in as that score runs the floor, lays it off the window and down. Nice pass, nice transition bucket for Escorn. Coach Taylor is going to take a timeout. That's your financial services timeout called as the see on the replay there. Nice run on the floor by the Bulldogs as the pass from Island to Etzcorn is good. We'll step aside at the break in the action, 57-35. St. John's with the lead here on WOSN. Our scoreboard tonight provided by Web Insurance Agency, serving Lima and Allen County for more than 100 years with offices in downtown Lima and Bluffton. Also, high school basketball tonight brought to you by John Stocker DDS, the premier sponsor for the Atlanta Bulldogs, providing dental care for high school sports fans. Take a look at the... Blue Jays upcoming schedule. They'll hit the road a couple of times to play New Knoxville and Continental and then get another Matt contest against New Bremen as long as that's still on schedule there. Uh, for e Elida, Kenton, Coldwater, and Adam McLandorf upcoming for the Bulldogs. I mentioned St. John's in their scheduled game against New Bremen. Cardinals winning their second state football championship today. So congratulations to Chris Schmidt and his crew as Colin Feathers fires up a three, a little short. And a rebound comes down to David Etzcorn. Approaching one minute to play in this ball game is the three short from Tanner Roberts. And the Blue Jays come back the other way. It's Gavin Old Green in the ball game. Ball stolen away by Zori Island. He'll race to the window. Drops it home. Zori Island has 12 points and another Metzger Financial Services timeout called by the Elida Bulldogs. See the replay here with Zori Island attacking the rim, finish him, got a steal down there, rewarded himself with the bucket. Again, Zori Island, a 13 WBL performer last year as a freshman, looking to see him step up. And again, for St. John's, you had a couple of all MAC players, first teamer Landon Grothouse out there. Yeah. He did a nice job, a good floor game, shot the ball well, and then. Nolan Schwinnin, honorable mention in the MAC last year as well. But again, they're so much more effective this year with that young man, number 11. I, 
I hate putting all this on him, but he's earned it already after game two. I haven't seen much. Uh, yeah, you got a couple of experienced guards with Landon Roadhouse, Jack Urker, and Owen Schwinnett, and then you throw in Cameron Elwer, who has shown the ability to put the ball on the hoop with I mean, 22 points last night, 31 points tonight. Uh, yeah, this is going to be a pretty dangerous St. John's ball game, ball club. A absolutely. And Last night at Crestview, we hosted Shawnee, and Coach Doug Hughes from Parkway was there. I had a chance to talk to him, and he just couldn't say enough positives about what I was going to see in Cameron Elwood tonight, and it has held true, no doubt. See that upcoming schedule. Get a live matchup between Ottaville and Antwerp, a pair of teams that made the regionals last year of Division Four, and now get a timeout. Metro Financial Services timeout called by St. John's. Is uh, the officials just spotted the ball and started counting. They got no spot where they're trying to get a ball across the timeline. Couldn't, so they'll take a Metzger Financial Services timeout. And with the Christmas holiday upcoming, if you're looking for a perfect gift for an out-of-town sports fan, WSN can be streamed anywhere in the world online on Roku and Apple TV for a $100 annual donation. Give the gift of hometown sports for the holiday. Sign up on app.wosn.tv by downloading our Roku and Apple TV apps. It sure is nice to just punch up the WSN stream on a Roku and see great local sports action whenever you want. So under a minute to go here for the Blue Jays and Bulldogs, 20-point lead for St. John's as Colin Feathers has the basketball. Working against David Edscorn, trying to get it down low. Instead, gets straight away to Peyton Stabler in the ball game. Cohen Marks here as well. St. John's empties the bench with, 20, with a 20 point lead and under a minute to go. So bounce, trying to get to hold Green, couldn't get it there. Dory Island runs the floor. Floater, no good from Camden Howard. And the Blue Jays will bring it across the timeline one more time. They get it to hold Green. They want to see him put it up. Left it a little short, did the big fella. It looks like that will do it for this evening's ball game. 57-37. St. John's victorious tonight. 31 points from Cameron Elwer into victory. So the Blue Jays move to 2-0. St. Elida drops to 2-2. We'll step aside for a brief moment. Chat with Aaron Elwer, the head coach of the St. John's Blue Jays, when we return here on WOSF. Back here at the Elida Fieldhouse, wrapping up a 57-37 victory for the Delphi St. John's Blue Jays. I'm Garrett Seawright, joined now with Aaron Elwer, the head coach of the Blue Jays. And Aaron, uh, 31 points tonight for Cameron, a pretty good debut weekend as a varsity basketball player. Yeah, you know, really neat experience for him. And, um, you know, obviously he has worked extremely hard and put a lot of time in. And for him and anybody who works that hard to reap the benefits is what is we as educators and, and really coaches talk a lot about. And um, he's always been wise beyond his years and he's handled himself in different situations really, really well. And, you know, I think the best part of it about is our, our, his teammates and how they get him open and how they respond to him. Um, but yeah, to, to be 2-0 and and to have him have a good weekend, it's a, it's a great start. On the defensive end, it looked like you guys played pretty well there as well. Yeah, I thought so. Outside of the second quarter, I think we gave up 18, which is a lot. Um, I know it was up and down a little bit, and, and there were several possessions, which we're okay with a little bit. But you know, we also need to dig in and make sure we try to make sure we're trying to get stops and scores as well. I, I know last night you got out to the big lead and, and let Kalida claw back in. Tonight, you you kind of had the reverse where you, where you you kept that kind of sense of urgency. Are you glad to see that change? Yeah, for sure. You know, literally 24 hours ago, we were kind of in the same situation, and um, you know, I kind of left it up to our seniors, like we need to find a way and get something different to allow our third quarter to start differently. Um, and they took to that. They actually had a little stretching routine going on in there and it worked today um, and uh, we are again proud of our guys to to learn from maybe a mistake last night on not being ready to go and having the ability to extend our lead today in the third quarter well congratulations on the win we appreciate your time and uh, well, i'm sure we'll catch up with you here during the season sound good appreciate it that's aaron elwer joining us here yeah, at yeah. elida for a 20-point victory and now dave bowen stepping back in with us and and dave it's time to name our stally hustle award winner and there was one guy that stood out yeah, Cameron Elwer, we talked about him in the pregame. And again, he's a diaper dandy. Typically, we don't put that kind of emphasis on a freshman. But Cameron, he earned it all, <laughs> and he showed us why we talked about him in the pregame. Yeah, 24 first half points, ends up with 31, which is a, a fantastic weekend for anybody, let alone a freshman playing their, their first two varsity basketball games with 22 last night. Yeah, and the neat thing is if you're a Blue Jay fan, Coach Elwer's not going to let this 
affect them as a team in the sense that we have a freshman standout, we're going to go to him all the time. That's not going to happen. They're going to play team ball. Those 31 points came within the context of the offense. Yeah. They're just going to get better every night. They're going to be a force to be reckoned with, the Blue Jays are. So our Sally Hustle Award winner tonight is Cameron Elwer, 31 points in the victory for the freshman. And for more of our Stanley Hustle Award winners, you can check out the WOSN YouTube page. Final thoughts tonight, Dave? Well, and Coach Tabler, you know, he lied it, had an off night a little bit tonight. But again, overall, in the first four games, he's got to be pleased with what he's seeing, the foundation from which they can build. And again, the Blue Jays, 2-0. Here we go. Blue Time Jays. to get into <laughs> conference action next week. Exactly. The Blue Jays will be back in action on Friday at New Knoxville with that 2-0 record with the loss he lied it drops to 2-2. Two and two. The final score, the final time, St. John's a 57-37 winner over the Elida Bulldogs. For our fantastic WOSN crew and Dave Bone, I'm Garrett Seawright saying so long from the Elida Fieldhouse here on WOSN.